In today's video, we're going to look at how simple it is to install the Wayfinder hardware on your boat. Have it interface with all the sensors you already have so that you can enjoy the Wayfinder experience on any computer, tablet, or screen you may have on board. And here it is, the heart of Wayfinder. You can think of this as your boat's brain from this point on. Now, there's a few things to notice around this unit. Uh, there's a couple of antennas. We're gonna talk about them in a future video, but there's also a number of connectors on the sides here. The unit itself is made to be in a relatively dry place, so it fits perfectly inside something like a chart plotter pod, uh, or maybe in a maintenance cupboard or an electrical cabinet. Uh, we store ours right behind our instruments in our helm. It's a nice, simple place. And because there's no moving parts on the unit, it actually has this heat sink built right into the top of the casing. So we don't need to worry about having any fans in locations that we don't necessarily usually have them. Um, but that's pretty much all you need to know about the hardware side at this stage. When it comes to these connections, that's how we're going to bring data into the unit. So Wayfinder is all about listening to sensors around your boat bringing that data back to this unit, and this is where the magic happens. To do that, in most boats, there's two forms of sensors, if you like, or two data paths. We refer to them as NMEA, and there's the NMEA 2000 standard, and the NMEA 0183 or 0183. Uh, generally speaking, NMEA 2000 is a newer platform, and 0183 is an older. So if your sensors are of an older nature, a second-hand boat perhaps, quite likely that they're going to be in the 0183 format. To begin with, we'll talk about NMEA 2000, because as more and more sensors have been coming on the market, pretty much everyone goes that road. While you may not own devices that have the NMEA 2000 label on them, most manufacturers have created their own form of communication network using their own dedicated connectors. In many cases, however, these connectors are using exactly the same wiring and protocols as NMEA 2000, and they can be mixed and matched. While many manufacturers encourage you to purchase an adapter from one of these connectors to another, our preference is to design a system with as few adapters as possible. This not only reduces the potential for wires coming loose, but also makes it easier to keep a clean installation and trace wires when you need to. You can consult your manufacturer's guide to identify which pair of wires carry the data on your communication network, but in many cases these will be white and blue. Simply strip down these wires to expose the silver cores of each, and then we're ready to connect them to the Wayfinder hardware. In the case of connecting these, it's actually a very simple process. It's going to go into this green connector here on the face of the unit that's facing the camera. And you'll notice there's a number of holes in this connector, as well as some orange colored buttons. Now, I find this easiest to, uh, to do with a small screwdriver, like a flat blade, maybe a jeweler's screwdriver, uh, the kind you might use on your glasses to repair the uh, arms, or if you've ever done any electrical work, you probably have something like this. And we're just going to insert the white and the blue cores into this top one here and the one right next to it. So the order they go in is quite simple. We're going to go white to the absolute corner and blue right next door. Now this can be a little bit tricky from this angle, but I'll do my best to uh, make it look like I've done this before. We just aim those into the holes, and then as they go in, if you give those orange buttons a gentle press, the cable is actually then given freedom to move all the way into the connector. So once those have been installed in that connector, you can give them a very gentle pull and they shouldn't come loose. Again, we want to make sure that everything on Wayfinder is about safety. And so if you are out in a heavy seaway, we don't want your data connection to the unit coming loose at any point. And that's why these are gripping those silver strands that we've just entered into the connector. With that done, if you have nothing but NMEA 2000 data coming in, all of your sensors come on that bus, actually Wayfinder has everything it needs to get up and running at this point. Um, However, if you're like us, our boat is a mix of NMA 2000 and older sensors from the NMA 0183 platform. So thankfully, Wayfinder can receive those as well. Um, so some of our sensors will come in on this and others will come in on 0183, which if you've ever worked with that, you'll probably know that it's a little bit more rough and ready. There's no standard connector available. Um, but what you do have is a, an NMA 0183 data bus, usually going through all of your sensors. And inside that cable, you'll find four cores, much like we did earlier. Uh, you'll find a green and a white pairing. We're actually gonna disregard those, and we're gonna use the brown and the yellow pairing that we have here. So the brown and the yellow are gonna bring our NMA 0183 
data into Wayfinder. And for that, it's going to come in on the side of the unit. So instead of this front facing connector, we're going to use the connector over here on the side. What's great is we can actually just dislodge this connector gently. You'll find a number of screws here, silver screws facing us, as well as the holes where we're going to be able to place our wires on the side. And in the case of our 0183, we're just going to connect those quite simply, yellow and brown, starting from the leftmost. And then taking our screwdriver again, we're just going to tighten up the silver screws on top. And these are going to grab hold of the, uh, the wires inside the connector now. Now, you don't have to go to town on these. You don't have to thread them bare. Uh, we're just doing it enough, again, that the connector isn't going to come loose in a larger sea or big waves. And again, a little pull, and we can check that they're not going to come loose. If they do fall out, just loosen that screw, try again, and uh, you'll get a nice holding pretty soon. It's quite easy. And once you're done with that, we're then going to connect that back into the side of Wayfinder, which is just a case of a gentle push, lining it up, and... There it goes. This connector actually has even more security that we can take our screwdriver again and tighten up two small screws just on the extremities of that connector. So just tighten these guys up. And again, that means they won't come loose in a bigger seaway or while you're off on your adventure. So with that, Wayfinder has all the data coming in that it needs. It has 0183 sensors, our older sensors, and it has NMEA 2000, our newer sensors, all being fed into the unit. Wayfinder has a lot of customization. Uh, logbooks, storage settings, that sort of thing. And for that, we're going to use a standard USB key. Um, this one isn't that large. I think it's probably around eight gigabytes. Uh, it's entirely up to you how large a key you have available. Uh, but usually a couple of gig is a good start point because we're going to have a lot of adventures and that logbook can get quite large. We're going to put that just in the USB port, just to the side of that green connector. Uh, there are two there, but the one inboard, if you like, and we'll just slot that in place. Now we have a place to store all of those settings and extra data. This is great. Wayfinder can pretty much up and run now. The boat's good to go, except we can't see anything. Uh, we obviously want to interact with Wayfinder with maybe an iPad, a computer screen of some sort, a laptop. And for that, we're going to need a network. Uh, you're probably watching this on a network, so you'll be familiar with uh, things like traditional household routers or routers. Uh, this one runs on 12 volts, uh, but also has a number of connections available to connect computers, laptops, wayfinders, all on these yellow connectors here. Um, and if you're having a more complicated network, this is the kind of thing you're probably going to want to find and use on board. Fortunately for us, you can also buy travel routers or travel routers. Now, usually these have a little less feature set, uh, less connectors available. As you can see, this one runs on USB for power uh, and has just one network connector, uh, RJ45 connector. So in our case, we're making a wireless example here. So we're going to connect our Wayfinder unit to our wireless router using the cable that comes in the box. Uh, this is a traditional network cable. It's uh, often referred to as a Cat5 or Cat6 cable with these RJ45 connectors on it. And they just enter into Wayfinder using either of the ports and just a gentle push and you'll hear a click. That tells me again, it's secure, it's not coming out. And then the other end just goes straight into our travel router with a gentle click. There we go. So now we just add power to that. Again, this one's USB, yours might be running on 12 volts or maybe even AC uh, if you've got something from a residential use point. Uh, most are running DC power if you have a look at their power supplies. Uh, and so you could convert it if, you, uh, if it does come with a, a wall connection. You can probably adapt it if you need to. Okay, so now we have power for our network. Uh, we have data coming into our, our Wayfinder and we've connected our logbook USB key. So really the last thing we need is power for Wayfinder, which comes in on a standard barrel connector. And now Wayfinder can run on anything from eight to 36 volts DC. So if you're a 12 volt boat or a 24 volt, or maybe you have some fluctuations going on, you should be pretty safe and sound just to take a standard barrel and connect that here on the side of the unit in the only port for power. And immediately you can see that Wayfinder is powered up with that orange light on the power switch. So with this, Wayfinder is already reading all of your sensor data from 0183 and NMEA 2000. It's bringing it into the unit and processing it, monitoring it, and sending it all out to your wireless network. Now, the great thing is we want to be able to interact with Wayfinder using tablets, computers, whatever we have available. And so we're going to have to find a device. I have an iPad here and we're going to connect it to our wireless network. So in the case of an iPad, we're just going to head over to settings and we're going to find our wireless network. And if we have any password details, we're just going to enter those in. 
There we go, we can now see that we're connected with this small Wi-Fi signal in the top right corner. In the case of our PC, that may be down on the bottom right uh, on a Mac, top right on the toolbar, uh, but if you know your, your device, you should know where to look for the connection. Next up, we're gonna open a browser. Now this could be Safari, Chrome, Firefox, whatever you're comfortable with. Simply find it within your system here and enter in the web address wayfinder.local. And with that, you're ready to connect as many devices to the Wayfinder platform as you please. To continue your Wayfinder journey, why not subscribe to our channel? And if you'd like to see how to customize Wayfinder for your vessel, check out our next video.